Hello, my name's David and I carve some stone. <laughs> Come on, you two, give us some peace. <laughs> I needed a new hobby, but I wanted a new hobby that was going to be something that was as different from my daytime job in IT as it could possibly be. The first thing that came to mind was, you know, I'm a 21st century tech all day. I want something really the opposite end of the scale. And what could be more than Bronze Age tech? I wanted it to be, um, you know, more handcraft. An awful lot of what I do in terms of IT is, you know, it, it's 2D, it's something on the screen, it's all logic and you click a button that does this and you click a button that does that and it's very matter of fact, it's very engineering as a discipline. This is, a, somebody asked me for a house um, number to go on the front of their house. Eventually, when, I'm, when it's completely finished, I'll put a couple of uh, keyholes in the back so that, um, it can um, sit down on a screw, you know, something like that. Um, for your average house, that's big enough to see from the front gate. What is on the computer uh, uh, is, is a font, but once you're on I'm, I'm using it for what I wanted to do, it's a typeface. I'm turning this into a 3D shape. This is going to last uh, at least my lifetime, probably many lifetimes if it's looked after and, and uh, you know, if it were made out of granite, uh, many, many lifetimes, uh, semi-eternally, you know, until somebody drops it. You know, you going in and out of your front door from the car every day from work, you're going to see it every single day. And if something's slightly wrong with it, a lifetime of walking past it, you're going to notice it. And then every time you notice it, the following time and the time after that, it's going to become more and more irritating. When we're in our teenage years, we see ourselves as almost immortal because that period of time ahead of you is so long, you know? Um, and uh, when you get to uh, a few years down the line, you realise that, uh, you know, it's not, that's not quite as long a period of time as you used to think it was. A name on a board or in a magazine, etc., that will fade away, but I'm leaving something behind that will stand the test of time. I get a, a big mixture of work from sort of private requests, house names, um, pet memorials and so on, people who, who either know me or know my work. An awful lot of uh, what you see in churchyards these days is uh, uh, sandblasted. So they buy in a piece of Chinese stone, and put it under in a machine, sandblast the lettering on, paint it, glue it all together and put it in the field. But somebody wants, sometimes they want something a little bit different, something unusual, uh, and that's where I come in, with v, hand V-cut lettering. I, I don't know that there's that many memorial mason companies who do an awful lot of that anymore. I also get some, um, I get some quite Sometimes some difficult pieces to do as well. A little while ago I was doing a memorial to a um, deceased serviceman, a past serviceman, and his two sons, one of which died youngish, but the other one died in his very young years. And that's not always easy to do. Um, and I do sometimes have to stop. I will go and have a cup of tea. Um, and maybe even sometimes just leave it for a day. Uh, I'm a father of four. Um, I've got a number of grandchildren and you can't help but start thinking, you know, if you're carving a, uh, the, the, the lasting memorial to a child, you can't help but think about the fact that we're all mortals and then one day you know, you'll want a memorial, they'll want a memorial, etc., etc. It's, it's all, um, it's quite a, uh, it's a truth, an inescapable truth that we're all mortal. 
we're all gonna die somewhere. Uh, and if you dwell on the sadness of that, that can be quite challenging. 